and then out to this vaulted area, and then over into a, into a ditch to the Ash River. So that was built in the 18, excuse me, in the 1790s. We dated it to the 1790s. That detail I did not see. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Do the high schools and colleges in Charleston make good use of Drayton Hall? Not so many. Not as much as the, as the grades K through 8. Because the schedule is harder for you. You can imagine for, for high schoolers to get out nine, uh, grades 9 through 12, there are different schedules and so forth. So it's, it, we have some high school students come. We, and we also work with college students and graduate students from the College of Charleston, Savannah <coughs> College of Art and Design. They come and they have <coughs> internships or come on field trips and they learn about decorative arts, architecture, archaeology. Um, and so forth. And then I lecture, you know, for their programs as well. We, have, um, we we believe strongly that education is not just you know K through eight or K through twelve, but it includes undergraduate and graduate school and adult, adult learning, just like you're doing tonight. It's so important. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Charleston Community College is located in Charleston. I know. Even though you retired. Well, I worked here 20 years and left here almost 20 years ago, and I still, as Mark and um, can tell you, say we about the Maryland That's Historical right. Society. So you got a good 18 years to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, good. Uh, so my question is, and I was at Drake Hall, I'm very fortunate to be there about two and a half years ago, uh, referred to the paint colors and okay. their paint analysis. Um, those marvelous ceilings. Yeah. Um, were, was it all one flat color for the ceilings as well? Well, it, it was a white plaster that you see. Yeah. But they so were they hand sculpted. They were, they, and they, they in the 18th really, century, they would have been hand sculpted as you saw right. in, the, in the drawing room. But they weren't like picked out in any colors or. No, no, not, not, no. We, we don't see any evidence of that, that was at, yeah. at, all, at all. And most, were most of that uh, sort of, well, we, we often uh, call it sort of a yellowish gray, that that's stone right. color, taupe color. Was that throughout the house? We think, we, we think that was throughout the house, uh, except that the, <coughs> uh, the, some of the rooms of baseboard were, were, were uh, a dark bronze with a high gloss, uh, and then also the mahogany that you saw in the stair right. hall was stained a vermilion, uh, kind of a crimson color that would have stood in bright contrast yeah. to that taupe color. I think that's so contrary to our sort of It theory. is. We see the elaboration of that woodwork is so extraordinary, you kind of expect that there would have been contrasting color. That's right. And, I, and I've been told by architectural historians that the style of that time was to have a plane of color. It wasn't to be, you know, more three dimensional as you as you might think, but um, uh, so that that was it. so it was it was what was stylish at, at that time, and, I, and that's one of the points I was trying to make. When this house was under construction, both in its architecture, its paint, the landscape, and so forth, it was what was stylish, and not just in America, but was stylish in England at the time, and and it's true with Collins here in Maryland as well. They were very au courant. For what happened, what was stylish in, in the Muppet Land? Is that for one more question? Did uh, the drink? I just wanted to ask if the enslaved community, are they commemorated in the memorial that is at Great Hall for the Great and Yes, and not, not, not at that cemetery. That's an African, I mean, excuse me, that's the Great family, specifically Great Um But there is, and I didn't. Just in the interest of time, but there's an African American cemetery at Drake Hall that we have evidence of that goes back to the 1790s. And it is still in use, so descendants of African American community at Drake Hall still be buried there. And we think it's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, African American cemetery still in use in America. There's a uh, African burial ground in Manhattan, but that's not in use anymore. And there may be some in Maryland you know of, but this is still in use. And descendants of, of people that we just saw there, in fact, one of the club ladies that I showed, uh, she intends to be buried at Drake Hall with her ancestors. And we've had
programs there, uh, commemorations. Uh, we had a, a, a essentially we had a, a, a we were going to have a gate to make more formal entrance because the grown up boys would clear that out. But there are a lot of dips in the ground. But an old African American, Richmond Bowen, whose boy was born in 1908, 1908, told us, in no uncertain terms, leave it alone. Leave rest. These people work during their, they work hard in their life. Don't go in and you know, fuss it up. And so, uh, so we didn't fuss it up. Uh, we've, we've left it alone. And so uh, we, we, we've left it. But we wanted some significance given to them. So we worked with the, uh, uh, with the blacksmith, Philip Simmons, whose work is at the Smithsonian and so forth. He's from Charleston. And he designed a... Uh, a, uh, a, a, an arch, and we decided on an arch. We weren't going to have a gate, but have an arch because that's the portal from past to present, from Africa to here, and so forth. So, it, it, we had a committee uh, of descendants of African American descendants. Charlie Drake was on the committee. It was a, you know, it was, and we have an architect and so forth. So, we really worked at it. And it came up with this design and had a ceremony um, that was very uplifting, uh, so that it, 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 it is memorializing that way. Thank you, George.